Welcome to The Lion Within Us, a podcast serving Christian men who are hungry to be the leaders God intends you to be. I'm your host, Chris Granger. Let's jump in. All right, fellas, it is your meat episode of the week, and you're right here at Thanksgiving, so I know you're excited about that. So let's dive right into it and 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 see what scripture we have we're going to be unpacking this week. So it's actually in the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 27, just one verse. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due. When it is in your power to act. Ooh, that act. So, fellas, got a fun story to unpack this week. First of all, for you guys who are watching online, got a steel hat on, this orange hat, got this orange shirt. I'm like, Chris, what's up, bro? What's your, it's not the normal line gear. Yep, it's not. It's, it's not. So, this is some special gear that we put, that we had together. What well, the hat's not. The hat's just kind of cool. But this, the shirts are some special gear that we put, we had made up for our first mission trip that we coordinated at the line with us pretty pumped up about it pretty excited was really nervous about it uh, as well and and uh, we tried a mission trip earlier in 2024 and uh, we just really struggled getting the, the the number that we needed to pull it off so we said you know what apparently god's just saying pause so we, we press pause and uh, we're working with a great organization called praying pelican ministries and we press pause. We said, we're just going to hold off to the spring. And then all of a sudden, you know, you guys are very familiar. If you, if you live in the United States, particularly Southern Eastern United States, Hurricane Helene hit. And when it hit, there was just a, a very direct call on my heart from the Lord to, you got to do something here. You can't just sit idly by. Then I read that scripture like, do not withhold good from those who, whom it is due when it is in your power to act. I'm like, <laughs> I get it, God, I get it. Because we originally had a plan in Appalachia mission trip anyway. So now it was like, okay, huh, I need to do this. So this is not just a mission trip. It was just turned into a disaster relief. And we knew we had to do something. And I just threw it up. I, I went out to praying pelicans. I'm like, look, here's what we need to do. <clears throat> here's the area that I would love to go. They originally had it worked out. We we're going, we we're going to hit up Damascus, Virginia. They got hit pretty hard. So, okay, perfect. Got the dates lined up. And I said, and I told them it, it was two guys I work with primarily, Lonnie, which I love you, Lonnie, listening brother, and, and Mark. And I said, all right, guys, we're just going to throw it out. I have no idea if anyone's going to sign up. No clue. We're just going to take a step of faith. We'll throw it out there and we'll see what happens. We'll ask for donations and ask for guys. That's it. Well, buddy, two led to four, led to eight, led to 16. And we ended up at 24 guys registry to go to the mountains and serve the people who were in need for three solid days. It was crazy. 24 guys. Again, initial plans for Damascus. The whole idea, the, all along the way, was flexibility and grace, which I'll talk more about that in a minute. We found out once we got to pass, I think, 12 or 14 guys that Damascus, the facility there wasn't big enough to hold us. So they're going to move us to a place called Mountain City. Okay. Mountain City, uh, Tennessee, I believe. It may be North Carolina. Anyway, so they moved us from Damascus to Mountain City. And everything was set. We coordinated. We had everything going out to the guys. So this is where we're headed. Then about two or three days before we were supposed to leave, we find out that the church that we were staying at in Mountain City, when they got, they got hit by the hurricane as well, found that they had asbestos. <laughs> hey, we got to move you again. I'm like, no, this is crazy. So... I remember meeting with the praying pelican team. Like, look, this this is just part of disaster relief. But we we found a place for you, and it's in Unicoi, Tennessee, and it's at a place called Appalachian Christian Camp. And we think it's going to be perfect for you. There's a bunk there. You can we can you know house all your guys right there. And I said, okay, uh, let's go. And we're just going to go there. And so we sent communication out to the guys. And at the same time, you know, we've been collecting donations and, and, and you know, funding. Uh, the local church that, that I attend, they, they had a bunch of donations that they, they couldn't get rid of. And said, well, 
we'll take them. So we loaded up two enclosed trailers here. Big shout out to Brandon and his family for helping us with that. And, and Corey and Joseph for helping with load that stuff up as well. Uh, and then we loaded those trailers up and we're going to take them with us. So that actually, uh, that, that weekend was our men's retreat at the line within us. So we had a men's retreat here at the farm. And then we we end up leaving that Sunday. So the men's retreat finished Sunday morning. Sunday afternoon, we're heading out. Okay, so we had two trailers that we brought. And then uh, two guys came from Michigan. Uh, shout out to Jerry and Jeff. And they brought a, a trailer themselves full of supplies. So we had guys sign up from Michigan, as I mentioned, Ohio, Virginia, Pennsylvania, and North Carolina. All these different areas represented. Uh, pretty amazing when you sit back and think about it. You know, and God gets all the glory. There's no glory here that, that, that I'm looking forward to any of this. This is, this is just how God moves. So we had everything set up. We had the donations. We had the supplies. And that Sunday, we finished up the, the men's retreat. And my buddy Jarrett came over. He drove one trailer. I had another trailer that was not with supplies. The trailer I took just had just uh, equipment that we needed because we're going to be doing, you know, tree debris removal and things like that. So we had some chainsaws and some other equipment and we hit the road and uh, we ran into some traffic getting there, you know, just because everything has been rerouted because the inter interstate systems were down in that neck of the woods. So we had to kind of go around the elbow to get to your own type of thing. So we got there and uh, when we arrived, arrived, arrived rather, it was chaos. <laughs> I remember sitting down with Mark at Praying Pelican and uh, just asking him, hey, all right, so what's the plan? I don't know. What do you want to do? And I was like, uh, I don't know. I just got here. Like, I'm not from this area. So we had uh, we had a, a, one of our brothers who came there with us. Shout out to Dane. He had a connection locally. And we, we basically put a game plan together for that Monday morning. So we had guys coming in that, that whole Sunday. But my, my, my goal, my hopes were Monday morning, we'd be able to split it up and go knock it out. So that's what we did. And we, I remember putting an email. It was pretty late, 10 o'clock or so on that Sunday night. Finally got everything finalized on who was going where. Sent the email out, went to lay down and go to sleep and just really struggled sleeping. Really struggled sleeping. Because um, I just wasn't sure. There was so much unknown. I'm a type A driven person. I like a lot of structure. And disaster relief, there's just no structure. It's just, you're just, you're, re you're reacting. Again, flexibility and grace. And that's the message I put out to the guys. Flexibility, gr grace. <coughs> I didn't really th know at the time, but that message of flexibility and grace was a message I was sending to myself. I needed to hear that more than anybody. The guys that I was with, <laughs> they were awesome. They were all flexible. They were all grace filled. It was my knucklehead that needed it. So anyway, we get up that Monday morning. We had a good breakfast and got every, got everybody out on the road. And then the praying pelican representative, his name is Mark. He got in the truck with me. We we're gonna go scout some new areas to where we felt like okay, we we got to figure out where we're gonna go. We got all these guys here. We got all this equipment. They're working right now, but they're going to be done with these jobs pretty soon. Where are we going next? So we, we found a couple of areas that we heard were hit, just hit pretty bad. So we drove. They're about 30 minutes away. And I remember getting there. And just this feeling of, I'm in over my head. Because what you, when you see the areas that we went to, they were pretty much at ground level with the river that runs through. But the river reach catastrophic levels and what we pulled up what we really drove drove upon was just mountains of debris where houses used to be excavators just dumping stuff into large bins just to take off and haul away there was no you know rebuilding the stuff that we saw it was complete devastation and just like, I, and I remember thinking, I, I'm not going to be able to help these folks. Like, this, this is so far, you know, they, they need a, uh, you know, a plastic surgeon, you know, and, and they got grandpa over here with, with some, you know, a couple of band-aids. 
No, I, I remember feeling so broken for them, for those folks who didn't have anything. It was gone. I was just like, God, I can't help them. But I know there's got to be people here. And I, and I was talking to Mark. I was like, Mark, I don't even know, man. I don't even know what to do now. Like we had put a lot of hope in that we'd find work over there. I'm like, I don't know what to do. Like I, I, at this point, I'm, I'm, it's over my head. I'm completely at the bottom of just, you know, I, th- I actually had thoughts. I would have to send these guys back home. These guys who drove out here for hours on hours upon hours, we're going to send them back home because there's just nothing we can find. And Mark said, you know what, Chris, sometimes like this is moments where we need to pray the most. We prayed a little, we said a little prayer. He's like, and worship. He's like, so there's this song called Show Me Your Way. And I want to play it for you right now, Chris. I was like, okay, pray, you know, play your song. I'll be honest, y'all. I want in a worship type of a mood whatsoever. I was kind of frustrated. I was getting frustrated at him. I was getting frustrated at others. Like, you guys are supposed to figure this out. And God's just checking me the whole time. He's like, you need to slow down, big boy. And this song, Show Me Your Way, just basically is just the way it's written, the way I remember it. It's the point of surrender to where you just get to that point, you're like, Lord, my way ain't working at all. I just need you to show me your way. Like, whatever it is, I'm going to do it. But it, I had to get to that point of surrender so that God would reveal to me his plan. Because I was trying to force it. Like, we're going to do this, doggone. I got all these guys. We're going to make this happen. That's not how it works. So we played that song. Not feeling a whole lot better. But we had another stop that was on our to-do list. And it was back in this little town called Irwin. And we heard about this place called uh, Care Irwin, as I believe is what it was called. But it's where FEMA had came in and set up some 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 um, resources there. So we drove there about 30 minutes after this song. Okay. Walked in. I remember there's a bunch of cops there. And I went up to one of them. I'm like, look here. I'm here. I got a bunch of dudes. We got a bunch of equipment. And uh, we're here for three days. Man, can you, is there any work we can do to help y'all? He's like, I know exactly who you need, who you need to talk to. And he pointed him down the hallway and told me there's this girl down there. Her name was Tara. So we went down there, kind of sat down with her, explained to her what, you know, who I was with and what we were trying to do. And her eyes just lit up. She's like, how long are you here for? I said, three days. She said, I'll keep you busy as long as you want. And she had a bulletin board behind her with names and jobs of stuff she needed done. So right then and there, she laid out three jobs. Bam, bam, bam. Can you do these? I'm like, we can do them today. She's like, when you run out of these, call me back and we'll give you some more. And I mean, literally, that fast, in the blink of an eye, we went from searching, praying, show me your way, Lord, till your cup runneth over. <laughs> right? Unreal, unreal. So the other guys are still working. So we, me and Mark, it was just he and I. We went to this first place, the first stop. And I remember, I'll never forget it for as long as I live. Her name is Miss Susie. And we pulled up. She would lived at the end of a road on kind of the top of a mountain. And she got hit kind of hard with the, with the winds. And she just needed some, uh, some, some trees removed and some, some limbs taken out. And uh, just the conversation, she just, for one, she liked my hair. She, she thought my hair was awesome, which I thought was fun, so hilarious. But it was just also... Just, uh, it felt good to serve. <laughs> you know, it was just me and Mark. And she was pointing to stuff she wanted cut in. I was just cutting away. And, you know, an hour, I don't know, an hour or so went by and we finished up her job. And just, ha- she was just basically in tears on the front porch and uh, just having some real genuine conversations with her about her situation. She's 81 years old. And, uh, you know, just, it felt for her to know that someone cared. Someone cared. And I prayed, just, just, just prayed with her and uh, just what a blessing it was. I mean, she, she filled us up more than anything we ever did for her. You know, and we just, well, 
And I remember that so much about this trip. Every time we turned around, people were praying for us. It's just, it's just unreal. Unreal. So we got everybody coordinated and we got more jobs done that Monday. And then we had another crew of guys coming in that Monday night from Ohio, <clears throat> from Ohio. And they were going to be there to work all day Tuesday. So we needed some equipment. You know, we, we, we needed some equipment. So we were able to go out, pick up a few more chainsaws. And then that, that Monday evening, you know, I spent a lot of my time just getting chainsaws ready and equipment ready so that on, on Tuesday morning, we could hit it and be rocking and rolling. So we sat down Monday evening after all the chainsaw work, the, the prep work was done and basically just laid out uh, everything that we needed to do Tuesday for the different groups. So we ended up sending out about four different groups on Tuesday. One, the, the Ohio team went out with some other guys and we split the other teams up to about two or three other teams. And buddy, we just crushed it. We just hit it hard <laughs> because my goal in all this was just to do all we could while we were there. No, we, we can't live there, but we, we can't, while we're there, let's make a big impact. There was this one gentleman who stayed there and uh, his name was Ricky and he had lost pretty much everything and he needed some help with this house and what was there and cleaning up. So we sent a crew out to him and he was just so down and, and, and out and, you know, very depressed, maybe even, you know, just contemplating what the meaning of life. And but man, our guys just rallied around him. It was just so cool to see the transformation in Ricky going from, you know, just uh, beaten, broken, bruised up to hope. And every time he would call Mark and Mark would put him on speaker, you would just hear a little bit more hope in his voice every time. And man, it was just, it was just really cool to see. Everyone just rally, just rally around. And that, that Tuesday was crazy. We completed about eight jobs in that one day. And I know we went from job to job to job and traveling with the guys. And, and we'd get you know, several times where the people would pray for us, which I thought was crazy. Like, you're praying for us. We're, we're here. We're, we're trying to help you. And they're like, no, no, no. You're blessing us by your presence. You care. You cared enough to take off work and to leave and come do it here. Like, seriously, we, we're praying for you. And I mean, by the way, several of our guys, including a company I, that, that I'm at, just were able to bless us with, with PTO where we didn't have to take PTO off. Just such a big uh, honor and opportunity to work for companies who care for their people. And so we just knocked those jobs out. One of the guys actually brought a tractor with a grapple in the front of it and a dump trailer. And they filled that dump trailer up with, with all the the debris and stuff like that and took all that stuff away for, for Ricky and, and just, just blessed him, just blessed him. And then the tractor turns into such a great resource uh, for us uh, to, to make an impact because I mean, you can just, some of the stuff when you're moving big, heavy trees and debris, it's just, it's massive. You need that equipment. Their tractor was there to help, it helped on that stuff. And, uh, so we, we, we went to a place late Tuesday. It's the last job we went to and that I went to it was me and a couple other guys. And I wanted to scope it out because I heard it was could be a lot of damage and potentially we'd be able to come back, uh, and, and do that job, you know, do his, work on that job as a big group on Wednesday. So we went and scoped it out. And what we found out, Actually, we'll take a break. We'll come back. I'll let you know what we found out. I don't know about you, but I used to find Mondays really rough. I would find myself trying to reset for work, trying to get my bearing on the family calendar, trying to find time for my own spiritual growth and development. And often, I found myself overwhelmed or just flatly ignoring aspects of my life that I know are meaningful to me. What I learned was that if I had immediate access to important and impactful spiritual topics and reflections to start my week, well after the allure of a Sunday sermon has passed, I would set my whole week up to be more meaningful and for the opportunity to make a true impact. If you think that getting such a boost would help your week to get started on the right foot, we would love for you to sign up for the Weekly Roar 
which is our newsletter that is produced by The Lion Within Us. Each week, we'll deliver a powerful reflection and practical steps to help you apply scripture with clarity and purpose, all being rooted in light and truth. So in just a few minutes, we hope to arm you with insights for living out biblical leadership with confidence and strength, and maybe even have a little extra bounce in your step. If that sounds useful, head over to thelionwithin.us slash roar to sign up today. That's thelionwithin.us slash R-O-A-R to get your weekly roar today. All right, guys. So what we found out when we got to that job on Tuesday, the last job of the day, was this used to, this was a resort, well, it's not a resort, I guess kind of like a destination place where you could go get married. You know, you could go have weekends and things like that. Beautiful place within the mountains. Um, and it had been hit by three tornadoes. So the hurricanes that came through, but tornadoes that spun up there as well, this place was just devastated. Absolutely devastating. I come to find out the road that, that literally connected to where this guy, where this family lived, uh, a dump truck had just crashed on it like the week before as well. There was gravel everywhere. I come to find out that dump truck driver had passed away. So it's just, the place has just been, just been hit hard. And I had a conversation with the gentleman who owned it. And he was telling us about some things that they do there. And, and, you know, they have, you know, different ceremonies and, they have, you know, they do some Indian type stuff there, which is kind of cool. And then they do some Buddhist type stuff there. And they do, he said they do do some Christian things as well. And, um, you know, just looking at the devastation, it just blew me away. Now, I noticed about I don't know, a couple hundred yards away was a Christian church. And this this church, just a small little, I don't even know what, what denomination, doesn't matter. It was just sitting there. It didn't even look like a flake of paint was missing, missing off the church. So I'm standing here in this devastation. Three tornadoes had just wrecked it. The Christian church is just right there. And he has a chapel on his property. And the chapel had some things in there, some Buddha things in there and things like that. And it's just been, been destroyed. You know, and I don't know. Things just happen. But I just do know one thing, man. We were put there to serve and to help this guy. And I just told him, I said, look, here's what we're going to do, buddy. It's late in the day, so I can, I can work here for a f- couple hours today, just me and these couple other guys. Yeah, we will, but we'll be back tomorrow. When we come back, we're going to bring the whole crew, and we're going to do all we can to make a big impact for you. He showed us where he re- needed the most help. It made a, the most sense, obviously. I said, well, I can't make any promises how much we can get done, but we're going to throttle it up and do the best we can. He's like, that's all I can ask. So... I said, and mainly I did tell him, I want you to know, we're just going to show you the love of Christ, man. That's what we believe. You know, it doesn't matter. You know, this is, we're not here to try to push you one way or the other. I just want you to know, God loves you. Jesus loves you. And so do we. So we left. We finished up the job that day, went back to the camp and had some fellowship that night. It's always, it's always good fellowship and things like that. Got our chainsaws, all that stuff ready. Everybody's going to the same job that that Wednesday morning. So the plan was in place. The plan was in place. So here we go. We 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 head out, and Wednesday morning we get there. And I had one goal in mind that just kept coming across my mind, and it was serve with excellence. Serve with excellence. So we, we get the tractor unloaded. We get all the guys kind of laid out on who's working on what. And then guys are just, <laughs> they're just going at it. I mean, it's crazy. Chainsaws are just, you know, buzzing and, and, uh, you know, limbs are being pulled everywhere. The tractor's being backed through a creek. Just, it's unreal stuff we're trying to do just to get so we can help this guy or this family. And we just, we're just nailing it, right? Just absolutely nailing it. Uh, and just everything we're doing is just falling into place. And the family didn't even come. Uh, they they purposely stayed away because they didn't they they didn't want to get hurt for one. But I think they kind of wanted a little bit of surprise to see what we what we could do. And I mean, we had piles of wood cut, stacked, and we would stack. We would we would pull it out the way, cut it up, and stack it. This wasn't anything. We're leaving work for them. 
we literally took this place. It was probably a good a football field size field. And we just cleaned, just cleaned it. I mean, you could play golf on it when we were done. It was beautiful. Just absolutely beautiful. And uh, the family came back there. And and I remember they, the, the, the wife just broke down. She just broke down. I can't believe it. I'm like, well, God gets all glory. But we're here to help. And it's just... Uh, Seeing seeing the joy on their face was was pretty awesome, and then up towards the front of the property was a, they had a little bridge that a river ran underneath, and across the river was several large trees. And one of one of our guys said, "You know, we cut the trees. I think we can get them out the river. Well, we're gonna try because if we do any of this work, we'll do it with excellence, right?" So we get up there and pull the chains out and the tractor out. And next thing you know, we're dragging trees out of the river. And, and I look down, there's a bunch of three to six foot pieces that have been cut and fell in the river. I said, well, boys, it doesn't make any sense for us to leave those here. Again, serve with excellence. So next thing you know, I'm, I'm playing, I guess, river saw, you know, lumberjack or whatever. And, and my, our buddies are just throwing me chains and I'm pulling, you know, hooking them around the logs and they're pulling them out. It's just awesome. It's just awesome. And we get down to the last one. I thought we were done. They're like, no, we got one more. I mean, talk about them raising the bar of excellence. When that family came down and saw the river too, they were just like, I, we don't know what to say. I said, look to God be the glory, man. Like, he gets all the glory. We just want you to know it. And that guy made a comment. He's like, you know what? You guys have definitely shown me. I think I need to spend some more time understanding Jesus. And at that moment, it's like, touchdown. Touchdown. That's what it's all about. And all our crews, every one of our crews had these moments of guys just, or people coming in them just showing how much they appreciated what they're doing. But also just, man, how much they they appreciate the love of Christ that they're showing to them. It's just, it was God moment after God moment, just unbelievable. And we were whooped. <laughs> we were whooped. We were tired. Uh, I remember at one point looking over to Jerry. I mentioned Jerry and Jeff from Michigan. And Jeff's like, I think he's in his early 70s. And Jerry's retired as well. And these guys were just working there. Rear, their, their tails off, man. It was just crazy. Running a chainsaw for like three days straight. And I was sitting there like, that's the life goal right there. To be like these guys out here, just giving it their all. Just giving it their all. Absolutely unreal. So we, we left the cha- I left with two chainsaws with me. I, rel- I came back with seven between donations and things that we needed to get. But we're set up now for the next trip. But the last night, the last we finished all the work, right? You think you're done. But we're out there and where we're staying, there's first responders. So a lot of linemen and crew people like that, as well as families that have been displaced. So we're under the picnic shelter, kind of just enjoying some fellowship, you know, having a cigar and just kind of sitting back, chilling out. And uh, next thing you know, some linemen came out there. These boys from Tennessee got to chat, chat, chatting those guys up and their supervisor was the most vocal. And we got talking about some things, some spiritual things. We, he, and he kept talking about earning, just trying to be good enough. And that whole, that led down a whole rabbit trail of works based righteousness and, you know, what is good and, Turn, come to find out he's got two and a four year old little girls at home and he'd been away for four weeks and he just doesn't know how to be a good husband and father. I'm like, brother, this is what we're here for. So we were just able right there in that moment, spend about an hour just speaking encouragement to his life and just uh, trying to, to reassure him that he is handpicked by God to lead his family. No one else. No one else. He's him. It was him. And I just remember like, Lord, I guess if you're willing to come on these trips, you better be ready to serve anytime. Because, I mean, at that point, we had checked out so far as mentally mission trips over, right? We just got to get home at that point. Nope. God said, I'm not done yet. 
I'm not done. So we were able to even get all our donations uh, uh, delivered right into the heart where we needed to. Just tons of prayer and research and just trying to find places. But man, we got all three trailers unloaded. Everyone got home safely. Uh, and it was just pretty awesome to, uh, to see all the way that the guys came together. Also want to do a quick shout out right here to each guy who came on this trip. I'm going to give you the first things, but got old Wayne, Ted, Taylor, Ryan, Paul, Michael, Mitch, Miko, Jeff, Josh, Jimmy, Jerry, Jared, Andrew, Russ, Adam, Wilson, Dane, Bryce, Al, Alex, and Adam. A couple of Adams in there. But guys, you guys are all just rock stars, complete rock stars. And, you know, again, there is zero glory that I want for the line within us to get for doing this trip. I want all the glory to go to him. But I also want to encourage you, if you're listening to this and, you, and you're like, man, that sounds like an awesome trip. Just running chainsaws and just out there serving. We have another trip. We've already got the dates. We're working on right now. So we're going to be leaving on March 29th. Yeah. Okay, March 29th, 2025. So if you're listening to this and it's before then, go ahead and start planning. Go to the line within that US. You can find the recent the links there uh, so far as our hurricane relief things that we're doing there. And let us know if you're interested. We're trying to, to line up the crews, the work, and we need the guys. Again, you know, when you get there, we, we got the food, all that stuff covered. You know, you have to cover your registration, but all that stuff will be on the website. And then anything we do that we collect and do from a donation standpoint, 100% goes directly to the people that are affected the most. So again, um, love for you to go check that out. Now's a great time. Your holiday seasons are here. Talk about it with your spouse. Pray about it. This is a men's only trip, by the way. Pray about it with your spouse. Talk to your employer about it. We've seen several employers that are willing to give the time off. You don't have to take this vacation time. But if you tell people you're going to disaster areas like like we're going to be heading back in March again, back in March, there's still going to be work to do. Be surprised. Sometimes your employer will give you that PTO. So it's worth asking. We're just having a conversation about. Also, when it comes down to to getting funding sometimes i mean mission trips it costs money you know we're it's basically you're you're living somewhere for a week people got to eat people got to sleep all that stuff right many churches have designated line items in their budget for mission trips so what you have to do is you go to your church go like, hey we found this group the line within us they're going out there to serve do what god's calling them to do i want to go with them here's the cost can you help me and you'll be surprised how many churches would just take care of it or at least help a portion of it. So there's lots and lots of ways. So it's not just all out of your pocket resources type of thing for you to get plugged in. I'm just telling you, if this, if you feel like in the least that God's tugging on you, have the conversation. Let's talk. And I get it. Like, I'm not one of these dudes, man. Like, like I'm super guarded. I have to be care- very careful about what I say yes to. But I'm here to tell you, it will bless you more than anything you can imagine. Just helping and serving others, getting out your comfort zone. It helped me big time. Just getting out of my comfort zone, getting out of my routine, getting out from behind this chair, right? All the time. Not in front of a camera all week. Nope. Just go out there and serving. It will bless you. It's it's what you need. And then also at the end, so after we have that mission trip, March 29th to April 3rd, at the end of April. We have our men's retreat. So go ahead and talk to your wife about that too. We want to blow that up. We want that to be a great time. You talk about fellowship. You talk about fishing, hiking, shooting, uh, skeet shooting. We're going to have lots of fun. Bow and arrows, games. Man, we, we have a, a, a blast. And then fellowship around the campfire. So this is more of a father. A lot of some of the fathers bring their sons with them as well. Men only. So that's at the line within that U.S. Check out the events. You'll see that as well as the hurricane relief. Love to see it both. Love to see it both. So really, once you start thinking about it, it's time to start outsourcing, to stop outsourcing this service to others. And I'm just honored that we were able to jump in again, praying Pelican mission, Missions, ppm.org. You want to check them out if you want to consider 
uh, working with them for a mission trip for your church. Hey, they're a fantastic organization to work with. Fantastic. I absolutely love working with Mark. I obviously love working with Lonnie. All those guys are awesome. For the guys on on our mission trip, can't thank you enough. Cannot thank you enough for the the sacrifice that you made to be there. Uh, For the guys that are listening and want to go on the next one, it's time to step up. It's time to step up. Again, go head over to the website, check out the Hurricane Relief, and go ahead and register today. And we'll get you all the details, but we just need we need to know very early how many. We only have twenty slots. We only have twenty slots, and it's a first come first serve, fellas. So if you got if you got you or three or four other buddies, and you think you guys want to do it, I need to know. We may be able to get more slots, but the the earlier I know that, the better. Okay. Love to serve with you. Love to be a part, you know, for you to be a part of it. The Lion Within that US is how you get all those resources uh, for all the different ways that we try to help and encourage others. All right. So go check that stuff out. Love to see you at the mission trip. Hopefully you enjoyed that story. Guys, as you go into Thanksgiving, enjoy the time with family. I know sometimes it can be super stressful with all the in-laws and the outlaws that are around. But enjoy the time with family. Enjoy the time of fellowship. Go ahead and have you a piece of pie. It's okay. You can hit the gym on Friday. <laughs> right. But uh, think about it seriously at the, at the Thanksgiving table. Uh, looking for opportunities. If it's not with the lion, that's fine. But look for opportunities as a family to serve together. And I just, for me, that's been very, that's come very aligned to me recently. Uh, but that serving others, is, it really is uh, it's a wonderful way to draw closer to God. And uh, if you're missing that intimacy with him right now, maybe because you're just a little too focused on you, folks, you know, serving others kind of gets rid of that. Because you're not worried about, you know, all the things you got going on when uh, you truly care or he- and are helping someone else with uh, some real struggles in life. So. Check that out, fellas, the lionwithin.us. Come back on Friday. I know it's still going to be Black Friday. Don't worry. We'll still have a, a fun Friday for you guys. Hopefully, you guys get it. Maybe you got to, if you ride around with your, with your spouse and, and she's shopping or something like that, and you just want some time to, something to kill some time, we got you. We got you covered. So come on back on Friday. So have a great day. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for all the donors who support it to the Lion Within Us. Again, if you just want to support the Lion for what we're doing, the lionwithin.us slash donate. You can connect with us right there. But I'd love to see you in the community. I'd love to see you guys in the community. Head over to the linewithin.us and you'll see ways to join our community now. Maybe that needs to be the gift. The one gift you give yourself this Christmas is a membership to the Lion Within Us. Just go ahead and get that. Be in it. Then you can surround yourself by fellow brothers in Christ who are just going to have conversations like this. Just authentic, transparent uh, conversations where you can just lean in, trust God, and just draw closer to Him. All right. So get after it, boys. Have a great day. Thank you guys so much for listening. This is not sponsored by Steel. I kind of wish it was. That would be kind of cool. <laughs> but anyway, still going to represent them. Have a great one, fellas. Have a happy, happy Thanksgiving. And keep unleashing the lion within. When I reflect on the kind of things that the men who participated in our discipleship masterminds had in the past, I am overwhelmed by the quality of their comments and commitment to each other. Several of the guys commented that this was the most meaningful leadership experience they've encountered. And we even had one man log into a discipleship mastermind while a hurricane was hitting his house. He was that committed and received that much from his peer group that he didn't want to miss it. Because of this extraordinary commitment, and because it's a true gift and pleasure, we made them a core part of our community, and we hope you might join us. We sit up men with their own peer advisory group of seven individuals that meet every other week for 12 weeks. Each member shares areas they want to focus on, such as improving their prayer life, being more intentional with their wives, or maybe shedding a few extra pounds. Together, we help them strategize, make commitments, find accountability, and learn. It's been our experience that most guys want a community of trustworthy men to share their ideas and create support for each other with. And it's been our experience that most men don't either create this for themselves 
or seek them out. So we do this because we want you to have that in your life. And all that is needed to begin winning is you. If this sounds interesting, check out our community to see the dates and times of when these different groups meet. Visit thelionwithin.us to start your free trial of our community to get started today. That's thelionwithin.us, and I would love to see you lean in and tap into the power of our discipleship masterminds. 